Hello friends, welcome back. Let us take one more case of transportation problem. And in this case, we are again going to use least cost method or LCM to get the initial solution of a transportation problem. As we know that now, in least cost method, we make allocation in a cell with the lowest possible cost, irrespective of the geographical location of the cell. Let us start. Now, first of all, out of all these 4 into 3, 12 cells, these two cells are with the equal least cost, 10 rupees per unit. So, there is a tie between the two cells. Now, what is the tiebreaker? The Higher quantity of allocation is the tiebreaker. If there is a tie between the two cells with the least cost, we prefer to make allocation in a cell where we can allocate larger quantity. Let us examine that. If we make allocation in this cell, what is the rule? Demand 250 or supply 300, whichever is lower. So we can allocate 250 unit to this cell. And the strange thing is to this cell also we can allocate 250 units, demand 250, supply 400, whichever is lower, so 250. So we cannot break the tie. Now what should we do? Now say there is no hard and fast rule to make allocation under these type of exceptional circumstances. But as a suggestion I can say that prefer the cell where we are making the allocation against higher supply. So th there is supply of 300, there is supply of 400. Out of 400 we are going to allocate 250 units. So I personally suggest that we should go for this cell instead of this cell. So let us make allocation of 250 units here. Now demand of D4 is over, fully satisfied. Out of 400 supply available from source C, we have allocated 250 out of 400. So now the balance of supply of 150 units. And we need to cancel the problem of D4. Just use pencil at the time of using, rather say, writing this problem in your notebook. Again, now, out of the remaining table or empty cells, which one is the cell with the lowest cost or least cost? That is add E1. The least cost in the remaining part is 11. Let us make the allocation. Demand 200, supply 250, whichever is lower. So, we select the cell add E1 and make allocation of 200 units. Demand of D1 is fully satisfied with this allocation. Out of 250 units available from A, now the balance remains 50. And we have to cancel the column of D1 because the demand is fully satisfied. Now from the remaining table, again there is a tie between the two cells A, D2 and C, D3. 13 the least cost. If we make allocation in this cell, the allocation will be demand 225, supply 50, whichever is lower, so 50. If we make allocation to this cell, demand 250, supply available 150, whichever is lower, 150. So we are going to prefer the cell with the higher possible allocation. If we make allocation here, it is 50. If we make allocation here, 150. So we are going to select this cell and let us make allocation of 150 units. With this allocation, supply of source C is now exhausted. Demand of D3 was 275, out of which 150 already allocated. So remaining unsatisfied demand is 125. But first we have to cancel the row of source C as the supply is exhausted. Now, out of the remaining table, there are only 4 cells and the cell with the least cost is this one, A, D2, least cost is 13, allocation possible is demand 225, supply 50, whichever is lower, 50. With this allocation, supply of source A is exhausted, demand of 
D2 is 225 out of which satisfied 50. So 175 is still unsatisfied. And with this we have to cancel the row of supply A. Now there are only two cells. Again applying the rule of least cost. Out of these two cells, this cell BD3 is with the least cost of 14. Let us make first allocation to that cell. Demand 125, supply 300, whichever is lower. So allocation of 125 units to this cell. And with that allocation, demand of B3 is satisfied. Fully satisfied rather. Source B had supply of 300 out of which 125 already allocated. So now the remaining supply is 175. We have to cancel the column of D3 after this allocation. And now we have only one open or empty cell that is with 18. Demand 175, supply 175. So the last allocation is 175. With this demand of D2 is satisfied and supply from B is also exhausted. Let us check the MN rule. Let us count the number of cells with allocation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means this is the feasible or initial feasible solution or non-degenerate solution. Now let us calculate the cost. Units rate in rupees or cost per unit in rupees. The multiplication of these two will give us the total cost. Currency we are going to use is rupees always as I belong to India. Units 200, cost 11, total cost 2200 rupees. Units 50, cost 13, total cost 650. Units 175, cost 18. It comes to 3000. 18 into 100, 1800. 18 into 75. No, it can never be 3000. 18 into 75, 1350. So it comes to 3150. Next is 125 units at the rate of or at a cost per unit of 14. 1400 plus 280 plus 70. 1400 plus 280. 1750 is it? Next is 150 units. At the rate of or at the cost of per unit 13. 13 into 150, 13 into 100, 1300, 13 into 50, 650. So total comes to 1950. And the last is 250 units at the cost of 10. The easiest multiplication 2500. Total 950 units. The total cost of twelve thousand two hundred rupees. So now we can conclude that if we use least cost method for transportation of the goods from sources ABC to destinations 1, 2, 3, 4, we can transport total 950 units at a total cost of Rs. 12,200 when we use LCM or least cost method. That's all.